Hey Morris Knows, welcome to this edition of News from the Nest. For today's show, we are going to be discussing issues brought up by students about school regulations, streaming services, and natural disasters. So let's go. I'm Antonio Cassidy with my co-host Avery Morin. Our first topic is dress code, the negative effects of it, opinions from students, and why this is an issue. As the weather is getting warmer, adhering to the school dress code becomes more difficult. An ongoing debate over the validity of student dress codes have been expressed by students throughout the country for decades. Are school dress codes necessary? Here's Natalie Cook with more on the issue. There's an ongoing controversy between students in New Jersey saying that schools like Morris Knowles High School are suppressing their freedom of speech. Morris Knowles High School students say that school dress codes ban suggestive clothing, which leads people to objectify women because of what they wear. What's your opinion on school dress codes? I think that girls shouldn't have to change what they wear, especially if they're not wearing anything inappropriate for guys because guys should learn how to control themselves and girls shouldn't have to change what they're wearing for them. I feel like the school dress code is extremely detrimental, especially to young girls. For example, I have an eight-year-old sister and she's obviously in elementary school and they're still enforcing dress code in elementary school and she was talking to me about it and I feel like it's very harmful to put that idea into young girls' heads and growing up you start to believe that we're gonna dress for men or anyone to like cover up so they can learn. And I even had like my friend's mom, she told me, and she said, we should cover up for the school dress code because men and teachers need to learn and if you're distracting them, like they can't help themselves. And it gives us the idea that it's our fault. Um, I think it's really unfair because most of the dress code is focused on girls and not on guys. And that, we, you know, there's this double standard that we have to live up to just because guys can't control themselves and overall I just I don't think it's fair. Not only do school dress codes attack women and what they wear, but they also attack men by saying they can't take responsibility for their actions if presented with distracting clothes. School dress codes were conceived in the Supreme Court case Tinker v. Des Moines Independent School District in 1969. The case decided that schools should limit student expression by enforcing a dress code since there was a concern that such expression can be disruptive to the learning environment or violate the rights of others. This case started because kids were wearing bandanas to protest against the Vietnam War during the 1960s. However, religious attire was suppressed as dress codes excluded garments such as headscarves, turbans, cross necklaces, etc. In Newsom v. Albemarle County School Board, the forum prohibited clothing depicting weapons for the safety of their students. Schools argue that these policies decrease tensions, reduce socioeconomic differences, and enhance safety. Schools also want to help students know how to dress properly and professionally. Schools keep dress codes because they think that students could be disruptive to the learning environment for the safety of their students and to prepare them for the professional world dress code. This has been Natalie from News of the Nest. Although dress codes are enforced for both genders, the regulations are more restrictive for females. Instead of enforcing strict rules about women's apparel, a more dis important discussion should be why these regulations are established in the first place. Scientists have stated that due to climate change, tornadoes have become more common in the state of New Jersey. In the last year, seven tornadoes alone have touched down in New Jersey, causing destruction and despair for our local residents. Here's an IFR with more on the matter. Tropical storms have affected New Jersey heavily in the past year. These storms have been reoccurring and unpredictable. Recently in 2021, New Jersey was struck by many tornadoes. This has made a strong effect on the East Coast. Since 1989, New Jersey has had an almost record-breaking 13 tornadoes over the past year. The weather has been relatively warm leading to humidity. When warm air collides with cold and dry air, it forms a tornado. If this kind of weather continues, more of these weather conditions can occur. 
In 2021, a powerful tornado in Gloucester County, New Jersey, recorded to be one of the strongest ones New Jersey has had since the 1950s. To spot a tornado, you may see dark clouds or possibly green ones. To stay safe during a tornado, you should gather battery-operated flashlights, radios, and other devices. Take shelter in rooms where there are no windows. The drastic effect this has on New Jersey makes it important to find alternatives to stop producing so many greenhouse gases or more damages to come. This is Anaya Farr from News from the Nest. Nobody wants to deal with a natural disaster, but hopefully with this information, we can all be better prepared in the event of a tornado and make it through safely. We all love going to the movies, enjoying a nice bucket of buttery popcorn with family and friends. However, the movie theater industry is being threatened by the increase of streaming services. Services such as Netflix, Hulu, and HBO Max are greatly affecting the industry, making the future of physical theaters unpredictable. Antonio Cassidy gives us detailed insight on this issue. Over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, streaming services have been on the rise. With many public establishments being closed, people had to find another way to spend that time cooped up indoors. As of May 2020, 62% of people living in the U.S. have subscribed to a streaming service according to the Motion Picture Association. With a streaming service such as Netflix and Disney+, Plus, you can stream classic and original titles right from the comfort of your couch or your own bed. But what about the latest and newest movies? Due to the rise of streaming services and people staying home and not wanting to go out, movie theaters have been struggling during and after the pandemic. With no attendance for new movies, theaters have lost a great number of funds, with even some theater locations shutting down. However, in the dark of this pandemic, there emerged a light a light of hope for theaters and the movie industry overall. A deal was broken between major movie studios and streaming services. Studios will release their films to be shown at a theater and after a 45 to 90 day window, that film will be released for digital streaming. This creates an opportunity for movie theaters since the only place to see the new movies is in a theater. This new policy allows for movie theaters to bounce back from the millions in lost funds during the pandemic. But what is the case after COVID, when everything goes back to a somewhat normal? Will movie theaters cease to exist? Theaters will remain an important aspect of our lives after this pandemic is over. With this new policy, after a few months and days, the newest blockbuster could soon be one click away. This has been Antonio Cassidy reporting from News from the Nest. I find it much easier to watch a movie in a few clicks than taking a trip to the theater, so I definitely understand how this could be a concern. But it's so tough going during the week when we have to get up for school so early. Every day, most students struggle to wake up early to get ready for school. School hours are openly debated amongst critics that believe schools should begin later to be more effective. Many students express that the early timing disrupts their education and how they learn. Reporter Celeste Myers is here to speak on this topic. It's still dark outside and you've just gotten woken up by your alarm clock dreading to get ready for school. Well, students, parents, superintendents, and school boards across the country have struggled with the proposal of whether their local high school should have a later school start time. Although getting enough sleep may not seem like that big of a deal, medical research shows that teens who usually get too little sleep are more likely to struggle in school. Gabriel Cupo, a ninth grade honor student at Passaic County Technical Institute, has many daily tasks to accomplish that are easier said than done. He tells us how his limited sleep schedule interferes with his education. I wake up at 6 in order to get on the bus at 7. By the time the bus gets to school, there's still far too much time until school actually begins. Ever since I started high school, I've been forced to wake up far earlier than I should. And by the time the afternoon rolls around, I find myself far too tired and exhausted to really focus on what I have to do. Although his honors classes are worth the effort and academic challenge, it is not easy. Like many high school students, I often get hours of homework every day. And by the time I get out of school, I'm too tired to do it effectively. And doing it becomes far more of a chore than it should be. Everyone needs balance and sleep is one of the factors. A study done by the CDC shows that teens' inability to get out of bed before 8 a.m. is a matter of human biology, not a matter of attitude. 
American middle school and high school students often take on various extracurricular activities such as sports, clubs, and jobs which often extend into evening hours. Sleep deprivation in teenagers as a result of early school start time has been a topic of concern and debate for nearly two decades. This has been Celeste Myers reporting for News from the Nest. For me, I just get up and go, but for others, I can definitely understand the struggles of waking up early and needing to be productive. We hope that you enjoyed today's packages about our community and media. If you would like to see more, subscribe to our YouTube page following the link at the bottom of the Morris Knowles webpage. Click the News from the Nest logo and then the bell to be informed of new uploads. We will be back again next week with our next edition from Block 2. This has been The, the Best, Best from, from the, the Nest. nest.